Me of Gauteng. I think it was just before the break that you were listening to some music. Well, those were the Cape Minstrels. In fact, that was the uh, the Pennsylvanians. It's a group that uh, are apparently the reigning champions. Is usually a competition with the Cape Minstrels, and those guys are the champions of the Cape Minstrels right now. So here we are talking all things about the national lottery. I mean, we all go out buy our national lottery tickets, and and we hope that we can become millionaires overnight. But um, the funds that are raised. For from the national lottery tickets, you know they're always uh, they're, they're part of the national lottery board, and this, these funds, of course, are used to help and assist companies, NGOs, you name it, that apply for some of these funds. And we are actually in a, a little bit of an exhibition room of some of the beneficiaries of the uh, the funds from the national lottery board. Well, today, lots of changes are taking place. All of this in line with new legislation. And one of the things is that the national lottery board, as of today, is not going to be known as that anymore. It's now going to be known as the National Lottery Commission. Well, to talk to us about some of the changes and what's going to be taking place from here on out and why it was necessary to implement these changes, I'm joined by Alfred uh, Nevotando, who is the chairperson of the National Lotteries Now Commission. Good to have you here on Morning Live and welcome to the program. Viewers and uh, you. What was the, what was the idea? Why, why did things have to change? Well, uh, you know that uh, the National Lotteries Board uh, uh, was undergoing a lot of changes and the law, the first law that we have, the, the 1997 Act, had a lot of prohibition. In other words, it uh, prevented organizations to act freely and the grants were not arranged properly. Distributing agencies were not uh, accountable to the board. So there were two structures in one structure, the board and the distributing agencies. Those are the people that distribute the funds. So they were not accountable to the board, not accountable to parliament, only the board which was accountable to parliament. But well, the parliament realized that uh, they, they have to change this uh, the, the, this uh, arrangement so that at least anyone who uh, deals with the, uh, the the funds or grants from the National Lotteries Board has to be accountable to the board because the board is accountable to uh, to Parliament. So that's why uh, today we are very happy that uh, the Act has been amended mm -hmm. and uh, regulations have been gazetted as of the 14th of April this year. We became the National Lottery Commission. Maybe let me also uh, address this uh, this thing. The National Lottery Commission is an organization, but it is an organization that will be governed by the board. So the board is still there. Right. It's only that we are the board of directors of the National Lottery okay. Commission. Yes. Okay. So that's the change that's going to be taking place. You mentioned it in your answer, and I think this is one of the one of the issues with a lot of people that apply for funding from the national. The right word would be the National Lotteries Commission. If you apply for funding, it's from the commission. Yes. Um, if uh, there's this 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 perception of inefficiencies and corruption in the allocation and the management of the funds, how is this going to change? Because I think at the heart of it all, we can change names, but the reality is is that a lot more needs to change. You see, um, the, the 1997 Act was uh, sort of uh, was more of a general uh, act, but this time. The Act gives us powers to regulate in a manner that it, it fits beneficiaries outside there. There are, there are small grants, which is from uh, one rand to 500,000. That is a small grant. You will be able to uh, fill in the form, which is uh, uh, according to that small grant. There is a medium grant, which is from 500,000 to 5 million. And the questions will also be di uh, uh, will be different, and there there is another grant which is uh, a large grant from five million uh, upwards. So init uh, initially, apl applicants will just request monies. So that's why people outside there they will not even uh, distinguish whether uh, this organisation was a rightful organisation. If the organisation gets twenty million, they will say no. 
Maybe there is somebody who is uh, favoring them. Maybe there is somebody who is also pushing that application. This act empowers the commission to have compliance, which is very, very, very up to standard. It, uh, it, requ it, it requires that the commission is having monitoring uh, uh, you know, division so that we can go and monitor the grants that we are giving to the people. Um, I must also say that uh, the, the, the operations of the distributing agencies are going to be monitored by the board because all grants, they will be known by the board and the commissioner herself. Yes. She will have a word to say, this I don't like, yeah. this let's investigate first so that we don't just put money where the money is not needed. We'll go and verify uh, on the ground. Another thing that I must indicate is that the, f the act allows us to do proactive funding. In other words, you don't have to wait for uh, uh, adverts to apply. Yeah. The commission itself will go out and check communities where there are needs that are so, so, so high. They will come and report to the commission or the board or the distributing agencies and will make sure that, yeah, will make a recommendation for yeah. that community to have a, a structure, an organization that can apply. Well, the other thing which is uh, very, very, very interesting is that uh, the issue of fine, uh, audit, uh, uh, the, audit, uh, the audit report uh, has been um, uh, uh, flexible now because you will only uh, pro present your audit fi uh, fi uh, findings if you are an audited organization. If you are not an audited organization, we'll look at the management report of how you handle the finance. So that is a, a bit re relief. Good. Let's leave it there for now, but thank you for talking to us. Thanks for giving us a little bit of uh, background information as to how all of these changes are going to work and how they all came about as well. Talking to us here, of course, is the chairperson of the La Na National Lotteries Commission, Alfred Nevertando. Thank you. Thanks so much for being our guest here. All right. Well, uh, as I said to you a bit earlier, as Alfred uh, gets out of shot here, we uh, had the Pennsylvanians here with us this morning, and they are from the Cape Minstrels. Let's listen to a bit of their music again. some lovely music getting us all going here on a Monday morning. I have to tell you, I've kind of forgotten it's Monday morning already with all this music around. It's woken us up and given us some energy to get through this, uh, I suppose. We're lingering on those last days moving into July now. Isn't it scary how fast this all goes? All right, well, let me give you a little bit of background now. Some information. The National Lottery Board is one of the 14 agencies under the trade, the Department of Trade and Industry. It was established in terms of the Lotteries Act 1997 and advanced advises the DTI on policy matters relating to the National Lottery and other lotteries. So there's been amendments to the Act for the renaming of the entity to the National Lotteries Commission. As you heard, uh, the commission, the name, has been around for a while. And uh, it's now just, uh, I suppose, the big launch that's happening today to make it more of a, a public domain. Well, to talk to us more about all of this is the Deputy Minister in the Department of Trade, and that's Mr. Mzwandile Masina. Always good to see you. Thank you so much for being with us here. Thank you very much. Good. Nice to see you early in the morning. I know, that's what I was saying. It doesn't feel like a Monday morning when you arrive to big brass bands and yes. uh, and the Cape Minstrels, it doesn't. Um, let's talk about it. I spoke about the fact that there are 14 agencies under the DTI, and then, of course, we've got the National Lotteries Board. Um, let's talk to us about the distributing agencies that are there. 
Well, uh, we've got a number of uh, distribution agencies that are part of the institution, but the problem is it was never institutionalized. They were like an independent uh, uh, agencies supporting the board. So what the new act now does, it incorporates them to be uh, formally part of the structures of the, of, of the commission, as you know it. So we're very much excited about that because we're now then able to streamline the work of the National Lotteries Commission as a whole. Yeah. How are they chosen? And how does the National Lotteries Board and the Commission fit into all of this? Well, uh, we're changing the board uh, because, you know, the board normally will refer to individuals, you know. So we, we now know that the, the Commission will have board members. Yeah. So that's a distinction that, was, that is going to be made. But even more importantly, that the, 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 the distribution agencies are going to be incorporated as integral part of the board. Meaning if uh, we're discussing issues of sport, as an example, uh, the chairperson will sit in the board to defend the decisions that would have been made by the distribution agencies so as arts and culture and charity and so on. So that's the kind of change that has been introduced and we're excited about it and we think that it will make a, a good impact to, 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 to good causes out there. A lot of people complain about the, um, the inefficiencies, the ineffectiveness and the slow, I suppose, distribution of funds. That's one of the big issues. And what I'm hearing now is that there is, it's, 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 it's great that it's being um, watched over so closely. But do you think that this is going to slow the process down even further? Well, no. Uh, in the past, uh, you could have an application for the next five years and nothing will happen yeah, to it. Yeah. But now, uh, according to the law, uh, 150 days maximum. So your application must have been processed. You must have received a, a, a verdict. So I'm, conf I'm, I'm confident uh, that uh, through these changes, we are going to ensure that we speed up the, uh, the applications that are before the National Lotteries Commission as we move into the new change. So I think that uh, we are imp basically improving our efficiencies as, as, as government. Good. So within 150 days of of you applying, you will get that correspondence and you will know whether your application has been successful or it has been declined, whereas before you could have waited up to five years. Yes, wow. that, that's, that's a huge change. Yeah. So yeah. I, we're excited about it and then uh, everybody's uh, gearing for these new changes. It's not going to be easy. But there are other issues that uh, we are already considering. If you notice that uh, th this is a third uh, national lotteries license that has been issued. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have been studying what is happening out in the world. You know, one of the things that is coming out that the, the operators basically will have once off license uh, because in South Africa today we have problems. Uh, from the first license to the, when there was a transition, we were taken to court. Uh, even now, we are still in court. Uh, you know, there is new operator, uh, but the matter is before the court. Uh, we can't even talk about the merit and demerit. One of the things that we would need to look at. Uh, look at to the future is to whether or not can't we extend the license from eight years to 15 or 20 years yeah. once off so that no one has a right to take us to court because it takes a lot of money we're spending billions of money that should be spent on good causes all because people are greedy once they're into the system they think that inherently they must be here for a lifetime and i don't think that's how it works that is why there's a bidding process and we're really now uh, going to be considering that as a second phase after that uh, this incorporation of the commission uh, and the agencies to whether or not can't we extend extend these licenses uh, in the future and so that so that we, we know that if we grant you a license, the, 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 the law must be able to state that you are not you are not coming back. In that way, we will have less problems. Yeah. We are yeah. spending a lot of money uh, paying for lawyers and which we shouldn't because this thing should be about good causes. It should be about ensuring that we keep dreams and aspirations of our people out there. But, uh, you know, a business has gotten so greedy that every little step that we take, when we take decision, we are told that it is illegal for us to take decisions because we have a right as a minister to take decisions about who becomes a, an, an operator on our behalf. Okay. So, so, so that has been the issues, but we are looking into those matters now moving forward. Okay, so that was going to be my question. Where do you fit into all of this? Where does the, the department actually fit into this, this entire process? Well, uh, we are looking at into the long-term sustainable strategy because, uh, you know, uh, when elephants are fighting, grass suffers. So we don't want the people who benefit from uh, national lotteries to, to continue continue to suffer because of, uh, of the greed of business from time to time. So we are now beginning to think outside of the box to say what is it that we can do. One of the things that is emerging from the international studies is that these licenses are long term, once off, you get it and then you, you, you go away and, and I think that we will really have to push all the necessary authorities because obviously it's not a decision, it's a discussion that we are beginning to entertain so that we, we can make uh, this uh, a meaningful uh, impact in, in the work that we are doing. Yeah. 
Well, indeed. I mean, when you look around here and the, the, the small exhibition that I was telling you about of, of some of the beneficiaries, I mean, just the one that's in front of me there, the Bopalong uh, beneficiary, I was chatting to some of them. And I mean, this is a, it's, a, it's for the community, for children, for, uh, for mothers that have unwanted babies, and they drop them off. They've been around since 2013, and uh, 28 babies is the amount of babies that they've saved in just that area. I mean, that's the idea. They offer them a, f um, a safe home, a place to bring, to, to, to live, and then, of course, some foster care. I mean, these are the type, I imagine, of beneficiaries that you're looking for as well. Yes, uh, that's why I was saying that, uh, you know, sometimes we have to think about what is the impact of this and how are we reaching out to communities. The charity work that has been done by National Lottery Sport has been amazing, you know, in the sports, arts and culture. Uh, we're now even beginning to build even the early childhood centers through the funding that is coming throughout of this. So we didn't want the funding stream to be stopped because of legal issues. So we have to care about projects like this that you are mentioning and many other projects throughout South Africa. So these are the things that we are looking at and we really want to ensure that uh, this fund does not stop because of the incompetencies uh, of, uh, of those who are unable to put uh, a good tender documents because uh, it, this is public institution at the end of the day. So we have to, we have to respect the rules of the games. Right, DM, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, talking to us here is the Deputy Minister of the Department of of uh, trade and industry, Mr. Mzwandile Masina. Thank you. Enjoy the day here um, at this, uh, the, the Music Academy here in Gauteng. That's where we're broadcasting from. And that's why you can hear all this magnificent music in the background. As you can imagine, that's what this broadcast is going to have. A lot of music. And also some weather thrown in between. Because I can tell you one thing, Polly, while I was driving here, there was so much mist as I was leaving my part of, uh, of Gauteng to come here to the East Strand. It was at, at one stage I must say it was it was tough eh? you saw that you were with me there's so much mist out there be safe on the roads but uh, there's also dropping temperatures Polly 